As Speaker of the House, it is my privilege to welcome you to Statuary Hall as we celebrate a pioneer, pioneering and patriotic American, the pride of Florida and America, Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune. Now let this time please stand as you are able for the presentation of colors and the national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star spangled Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the invocation, delivered by Senate Chaplain Dr. Barry Black. Let us pray. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, you who have brought us thus far on the way. You who have by your might led us to the light, keep us forever in right paths, we pray. We praise you for the laudable life of Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune and for this statue dedication service in her honor. We celebrate the fact that she was a drum major for justice, truth, and righteousness. As you have inspired us by her great legacy, Lord, empower us to persevere in doing what is right. 
fulfilling your promise to us that in due season we will reap if we faint not. Lest our feet stray from the places our God where first we met you. Lest our hearts drunk with the wine of the world we forget you. Shadowed beneath your hand may we forever stand true to you and true to our native land. We pray in the name of the one who said, the truth shall set you free. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. Now it is my special honor to invite our program participants to join in the unveiling of this magnificent statue. Usually we save this to the end, but we wanted you all to be able to enjoy it throughout the program. So we're going to begin. Kath Congresswoman Kathy Castor, who for years has been a relentless force to honor Dr. Bethune here in the Capitol. Members of the Florida delegation in the House, Congresswoman Val Demings, Congresswoman Federico Wilson, Congressman Michael uh, Walls, and we are welcoming over to the House side from the Senate to the House, uh, Senator Marco Rubio. Uh, I also want to invite Nancy Lohman, president of the Mi Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune Statuary Fund. She has been a force of nature in making this happen along with Kathy Castor and Dr. Lawrence Drake, Interim President of the Bethune-Cookman University. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Kathy Castor, Chair of the Select Committee of the Climate Crisis and Representative of the 14th District of Florida. Well, I am proud to be a Floridian this morning because the people of the state of Florida have sent the great educator and civil rights leader, Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune, to represent our dynamic and diverse state the first to be represented by a black American in National Statuary Hall. <laughs> Dr. Bethune epitomizes the values we hold dear. Industriousness, thirst for education, desire to build peace among people. She devoted her life to equal rights and service. Service, yes, to presidents, but to students, women, her race, veterans, and everyday Americans. We lift her up today at a time of competing ideologies to help heal and unify through her example because she also lived at a time of division but determined to stand up to dissenting voices, including the Ku Klux Klan, to do what many said could not be done. When blacks were denied education, she built a school. Denied medical care, she built a hospital. When the world was grappling with authoritarianism, she helped establish the foundational commitment to human rights through the United Nations. 
Her spirit is captured in this beautiful, beautiful sculpture by Neil DeComas, funded by the people of Florida with the help of Nancy Lohman and the Statuary Fund. Note the cap and gown and books of an educator, the first of its kind in Statuary Hall. The smile and sunny outlook, the gold lettering that shines like the Florida sun, the cane gifted to her by President Roosevelt, and of course the distinctive black rose that represents the students she educated, encouraged, and loved. Florida was the place from which she affected change and offered the My Rendezvous with Democracy speech, where she said, in this beloved land of Florida, I have kept a rendezvous with democracy, and I found it alive, vibrating with challenges that stimulate me and keep me fighting for the pursuit of happiness, the increase of justice, and the widespread acceptance of the brotherhood of mankind. Madam Speaker, this is Florida's intention today and for all time that the life and legacy of Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune be a symbol of justice, hope, and love for America and all humankind. Ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Nancy R. Lohman, President of the Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune Statuary Fund Incorporation. Love thy neighbor is a precept which could transform the world if it were universally practiced. Loving thy neighbor means being interracial, interreligious, and international. Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune. Good morning and thank you, Speaker Pelosi, for allowing me this honor. Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune began her lifelong career in Daytona Beach, Florida as a champion for education with the full realization that educational advancement equals social and economic development and advancement. She adeptly advised worldwide leaders on gender equality. She counseled U.S. presidents on equal employment opportunities and she championed in our community bridge building for making world change. Her worldwide views provided her a unique vision where humanity can breathe freely and live full lives harnessing their strengths. She continues to inspire all of us, every one of us, despite or including all of our backgrounds. She guides us with her last will and testament, instructions that are inscribed on the books behind me on Nilda Comos' beautiful masterpiece. I leave you love, courage, peace. I leave you the desire to live harmoniously with one another. I leave you a desire to have a thirst for education. And lastly and finally, she said, a desire and a need and a responsibility to teach our young people. I am honored and humbled today to represent the Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune Statuary Fund with the help of hundreds of donors, almost nearly 500 donors over the last four years, and our supporters and our advocates, Michael Watts and U.S. Representative Kathy Castor and your team, amazing, amazing advocacy, and our mission to bring fruition to, the, to Statuary Hall, Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune. Our board of directors, I must recognize by name quickly because they did so much and represent the fabric of America. Men, women, Democrats, Republicans, black, brown, and white Americans. Officers Bob Lloyd, Mary Greenlees, board members Jennifer Adams, Jim Cameron, Michelle Carter, Nilda Comas, Kathy Crotty, Joyce Cusack, Danielle Garrett, Daytona Beach Mayor Derek Henry, Sherry Lloyd, Nellie Lapoli, Sherry Paramore, Dr. Hiram Powell, and Volusia County Commissioner Billy Wheeler. This magnificent statue that you see beside me and its symbolism created by master sculptor Nilda Comas represents Mary McLeod Bethune's determination, resilience, passion, and diplomacy. And it shows us that we have the ability to create positive change and make a difference in our world. Nilda Comos is the first Hispanic woman sculpting the first African American woman to be honored here in National Statuary Hall. And I will tell you, I think this, thank you. Florida chose the perfect sculptor to reside in history with Dr. Bethune, and Dr. Bethune's statue represents the best we are of Florida and of America. During a 1948 
event with the National Council of Negro Women, Dr. Bethune said, in my final years of my life, I dare to work for the dream of a memorial for all women because the time has come for it and it is worth, worth a cause worth sacrificing for. Well, that time has come. That time is now. That day is today in this pristine marble masterpiece in her likeness. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Lawrence M. Drake II, Interim President of the Bethune-Cookman University. Good morning, Speaker Pelosi, Leader McCarthy, Senator Rubio, Chair Castor, Representatives Walsh, Demings, and Wilson, and of course, Nancy Lohman. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of everyone at Bethune-Cookman University, our hearts are rejoicing today, seeing our founder and namesake take her rightful place among the most distinguished Americans here in the center of our democracy. No one could have predicted that this daughter of slaves would create a university, found a powerful political organization, advise presidents, and inspire generations. But through her hopeful vision, her hard work, her generous spirit, and her deep, deep faith, she made a lasting and positive mark on our country and the world. As many of you know, in 1904, she started a school with six students, one of which was her son, Albert, with $1.50, and then went on to serve our university for over three decades as president. Today, our students and thousands of graduates around the world are living examples of our motto, enter to learn, depart to serve. Dr. Bethune's life and lessons are as relevant today as ever. She was an innovator in education and learning, teaching through what we all call today experiential learning. You see, she told you about it. She taught you how to do it. She allowed you to demonstrate that you could do it. And then she said, take it out to the world and share it. As we approach our 120th anniversary, we want to continue to train the minds and develop the students of the future who will walk in her likeness. As I humbly stand here in her stead, my vision for our university is where every learner enters with curiosity and departs with a growth mindset, is competitively competent, committed to lifelong learning and ready to use their gifts talents and experiences to selflessly change the world for the better, just like she did. You see, this remarkable statue by Neil Comas captures Dr. Bethune's legacy in history. So I invite you, actually, I aggressively invite you to come to visit our cherished campus in Daytona Beach so you can see her legacy in action. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, members of the Bethune-Cookman University Concert Chorale.
Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Michael Waltz, United States Representative from the 6th District of Florida. Thank you. Oh my God, what a great day for Daytona Beach, Florida, for Bethune-Cookman University. Wasn't that incredible? Uh, and for Florida, uh, again, having the first ever and only African-American representing our state right here in our nation's capital. I, I, I just want to take a moment. I'm so proud of the Florida legislature, of then Governor uh, Rick Scott, who signed the legislation to make this happen, Governor DeSantis, who sent the request uh, to, to allow us all to be here to, today. Um, you know, after she moved to Florida, she saw a need. She saw that the workers, the black workers that were building the railroad, the Flagler Railroad that allowed Florida to, to one day be developed, weren't getting an education. She saw a need and she addressed it. And she started a school with a dollar and 50 cents to train African-American young girls and to teach African-American young girls. It wasn't without challenges though. In one of the stories, the KKK, after the school was up and running, came marching on the small girls' school with torches, with robes, on horseback. She already had a plan. She told her teachers to disperse, she hid her students, and she stood alone at the gate and stared them down and stood them down. Madam Speaker, I've, in my military career, I've seen some, some tough cookies, some tough women. I guarantee you this is the toughest one uh, in, in the hall today. Uh, and if that wasn't enough, then she became a member of President Roosevelt's cabinet. She developed a lifelong friendship with Eleanor Roosevelt, who came to stay uh, at, in Daytona Beach and, and, and became a lifelong national leader in one generation, daughter of slaves, to a national leader uh, for women and civil rights. But I think her greatest contribution 
was her last will and testament. And if you haven't read it, you must. I read it again last night. And briefly, she says, I leave you love. I leave you hope. I leave you a thirst for education. I leave you faith. She said, our aim must be to create a world of fellowship, a world of justice where no man's skin color or religion is held against him. And she said that faith is the first factor in a life devoted to service. Without faith, nothing is possible. And with it, nothing is impossible. Thank you. God bless you. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Val Demings, United States Representative from the 10th District of Florida. To Speaker Pelosi, Leader McCarthy, Whip Clyburn, to the Bethune family, to our special guests. I was born and raised in Florida. And I remember as a little girl listening to my mother and my father talk about a black woman, a woman who looked like us, who started a college, an institution of higher learning in Florida. As I listened to my parents tell the story, it seemed impossible. But Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune made what seemed impossible possible. As a child, she picked up a book and was told, put that down. You can't read. But she refused to be defined by those children that day and went on to become one of the most powerful educators and most influential women in Florida's history and in the history of our nation. Dr. Bethune was determined to create opportunities for every child, every child regardless of the color of their skin, and wanted to make sure that every child received one of life's most precious gifts, and that's an education. She was well ahead of her time, but she knew that she was on the right side. She knew that her work was great for the greater good, that her investment was in something bigger than Dr. Bethune. Her labor of love could not be contained in her years on this earth. Her contributions will touch generations yet unborn. She was bold courageous, and although her journey had its triumphs and its struggles, Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune never wavered, she never blinked, she never flinched, and her commitment to excellence. A powerful educator, of course, but we all know she was so much more. She served her community, her state, her country, from the schoolhouse to the White House. Dr. Bethune did her part to form that more perfect union that we love to talk about and to establish justice. And yes, Representative Walsh, she said, faith is the first factor in a life devoted to service. Without it, nothing is possible, but with it, nothing is impossible. Through faith, Dr. Bethune dared to be brilliant, dared to be smart, and to let her light shine so brightly so that anyone who looked up could see it and dare to believe in their own possibilities. I am proud to hold an honorary doctorate from Bethune Cookman University.
Ladies and gentlemen, when we look at this life so well lived, it is only befitting that Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune take her rightful place in the people's house and continue to let her light shine as she represents the great state of Florida. God bless you and thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Frederick R. Wilson, United States Representative from the 24th D District of Florida. Countless slaves tunneled to freedom because one woman led the way. The Civil Rights Movement began because one woman refused to move. We got a seat at the table because one woman brought a folding chair. Poor children in Florida were educated because one woman would not give up. Harriet Tubman, one woman. Rosa Parks, one woman. Shirley Chisholm, one woman. Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune, one woman. Each launched a movement, each forever changed the way we see our world. So today, we are rewriting the history we want to share with our future generations. We are replacing a remnant of hatred and division with a symbol of hope and inspiration, one woman. Because today, we place Mary McLeod Bethune in Statuary Hall in her rightful place among our nation's giants of history. I cannot think of anyone more befitting to occupy this space of grandeur. Congratulations, Speaker Pelosi. Representative Castor, Nancy Lohman, Nilda Connors, and to the state of Florida, you made the right choice, one woman. As an educator, I always found many similarities between Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune and myself, and I have tried my best to embody her spirit, her stamina, and her perseverance. Our shared love of children, our love of education, and our shared responsibility of lifting up the next generation, no matter the roadblocks. She fostered young black girls, and I foster young black boys. I love this woman. That's why in 2004, I was so ecstatic and honored to serve as an honorary co-chair for the fundraising and unveiling of the statue of Mary McLeod Bethune on the campus of university with Rich Black and Harry Rosen. What happened on that historic day was an out-of-body experience for me. And it was a phenomenal disbelief and wonderment. It's a story I will tell for as long as I can. You see, the unveiling of the statue was on the program bolded in gold for 12 o'clock noon. But as things go, the ceremony was running behind because it was the convocation of the new president, and it was the 100th anniversary of the university and the unveiling. So I stepped outside to look at the statue to search for my name on the statue engraving next to the great Dr. Dorothy Height, another esteemed co-chair. When the clock bells chimed at noon, the sky above turned into night. 
We were overcome by clouds and thunder and hurricane strength winds. The winds roared through the campus and swept the burgundy velvet cloth carrying the statue right off her body, unveiling her glorious statue. There was nobody out there but two people. I couldn't believe it. Next to me was Albert Bethune, her grandson, who turned and said, Ms. Wilson, you know, Mama never did like things being late. <laughs> and the staff of the university chased the burgundy cloth down the street and put it back on the statue, and just as they finished, the doors of the convocation burst open and the beautiful voices of the university choir proceeded outside singing glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on. I tell this story because it exemplifies the true force of nature of Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune, one woman. In her life, she was called the First Lady of Negro America and the female Booger T. Washington. She was born to enslaved parents and worked the fields starting at just five years old. She could see clearly from those early years that education was the way out. So she struggled to take that route and built upon the education that was never afforded to her advocating and fundraising and building schools from the ground up for a generation of black children who had never before been valued for their minds. One dollar and fifty cent and faith in God, she did it. One woman. As the senior black member of Congress from Florida, I'm extremely proud to be here today to break yet another glass ceiling in this hallowed hall of democracy. But to be honest, Mary McLeod Bethune leaves behind a legacy much greater than any one statue we can erect. She made First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt know that black lives matter. She made five presidents believe that black lives matter. She made America begin to learn that black lives matter. Thank you, Dr. Bethune. Thank you for your vision that has lasted through the ages. Thank you for your generosity, your philanthropic, and that has saved millions of black children like me. Thank you for your last will and testament. Thank you for your spirit that still roams the campus, that still inspires the students and the millions of alumni all over the world. Thank you, Mary McLeod Bethune, one woman. And as a Bethune-Cookman University honorary doctor, I couldn't be prouder to be a wildcat today. Hell, Wildcats, one woman. Ladies and gentlemen, members of the Bethune-Cookman University Concert Chorale,
heaven, let me tell you how. Just keep your hand on the gospel bow. Keep your hand on the bow. Hold on, hold on, hold, 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 hold on. If that cloud stay in your hand, it will land you straight in the promised land. Keep your hand on the bow. Hold on, hold on. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable James E. Clyburn, Majority Whip of the United States House of Representatives. Madam Speaker, Mr. Leader, distinguished colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, hear the words of Mayor McLeod Bethune's last will and testament. Sometimes I ask myself if I have any other legacy to leave. Truly, my worldly possessions are few. Yet my experiences have been rich. From them, I have distilled principles and policies in which I believe firmly. For they represent the meaning of my life's work. They are the products of much sweat and sorrow. Perhaps in them there is something of value. So, as my life draws to a close, here then is my legacy. I leave you love. I leave you hope. I leave you the challenge of developing confidence in one another. I leave you a thirst for education. I leave you a respect for the use of power. I leave you faith. I leave you racial dignity. I leave you a desire to live harmoniously with your fellow men. I leave you finally a responsibility to our young people. Mary Jane McLeod attended grade schools in Sumter County, South Carolina, before graduating from Barbara Scotia College in Kingston, North Carolina. She returned to Sumter and taught in the grade schools she had attended. She became a social worker in Savannah, Georgia, before becoming a teacher in Augusta, Georgia. She returned to Sumter to teach at Kendall Institute and married fellow teacher Albertus Bethune. They subsequently moved to Florida where she found what is now Bethune Cookman University whose 77th commencement I was honored to keynote several weeks ago and become a wildcat. Ms. Bethune was active at the National Council of Colored Women and Girls Clubs, but found them to be too docile. Her activism led her to the founding of the National Council of Negro Women, currently headed by Dr. Thelma Daly, a graduate of Bowie State University. My late mother was a loyal and enthusiastic fan of this trailblazing leader and insisted that I learn everything I could about her. It was partly as a tribute to my mother that I lobbied Governor John Carl West 
to support placing a portrait of Mayor Bethune Bethune in the South Carolina State Capitol building. On July 10th, 1976, Ms. Bethune became the first person of color in South Carolina's history to be so honored. And thanks to my colleagues in this body and the state of Florida, today she becomes the first black person to have her likeness represent a state in this building. We cannot change history and we should not try. Nor should we attempt to revise or distort events with misguided tributes to defenders of human bondage or perpetrators of false theories. <clears throat> Although much work remains to be done, Throughout her life, Mary McLeod Bethune truly did her part to advance the cause of forming a more perfect union. And today, we are doing our part to honor her last will and testament. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Kevin McCarthy, Republican Leader of the United States House of Representatives. It's an honor to be here and uh, to sculpture. What an amazing job. To all those involved, I want to say thank you. At the heart of Dr. Bethune, she was a teacher. She was an educator. She stands in a fitting place where we debated much of the challenges of America, where at the moment divided our nation over the debate of race. Abraham Lincoln sat just at a desk over there. I think it's only fitting that she stands right here. She stands with a lot of leaders, but I think she stands ahead above. And you know what will happen? She will continue to educate Americans about our history as they walk this building. And the beauty in which she stands, stands apart from all others. You know, 67 years ago, one of the most dynamic women in American history passed away from a heart attack. Reflecting on her life, one newspaper wrote that Dr. Bethune was an outstanding personality who made noteworthy contributions to this nation. My friends, what an understatement. The impact of Dr. Bethune is known to us. She was a proud, God-fearing woman who lifted herself up and others. She had a vision to create a little school with just a dollar fifty, a school that today is Bethune-Cookman University. As she later said, though I hadn't a penny left, I considered cash money as the smallest part of my resources. I had faith in a living God, faith in myself, and a desire to serve. Concurrently, she earned the confidence of elected leaders in Washington, including the five presidents of the United States. Her faith, vision, and a heart of service helped America become a more perfect union. Dr. Bethune knew that in a great cause of liberty, there can be no excuses. Growth never arises out of playing the blame game. To her, the question was never who to blame, but rather how to grow. Bethune's statue stands today as a monument to her incredible legacy. Fittingly for this Renaissance woman, it was made from the marble from the same quarry that Michelangelo used to make the statue of David. Michelangelo once said, Every block of stone has a statue inside it, and it is the task of the sculptor to discover it. That was Dr. Bethune's approach to education. 
She famously said, invest in the human soul. Who knows, it might be a diamond in the rough. Today, we should celebrate the progress America has made to educate all young people, regardless of race. But it is equally important that we follow Dr. Bethune's footsteps. Dr. Bethune once said, education is the great American adventure, the world's most colossal democratic experiment. Let's create a better world in which every child has access to the great American adventure. Every parent has the freedom to choose the best school for their children and that every child can learn, grow, and succeed to the best of their abilities. And let's pursue our tasks like Dr. Bethune with vision, spirit, and faith. If we can do that, it would be a fitting tribute to the hero we honor today. Thank you and God bless. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Marco Rubio, United States Senator from Florida. Uh, let me begin by, by recognizing my colleague, uh, Rick Scott, when he was the governor of Florida. He was uh, instrumental in making sure that this day became possible, and I think he deserves that recognition, and thank you for being here. Dr. Bethune wasn't just a, a great Floridian. She was a great American, an American who refused to accept that her humble beginnings or the color of her skin were a limit on her dreams and on her destiny, and an American who, in the face of the ignorance, the cruelty, and the prejudice of others, she refused to surrender to bitterness or cynicism or, or despair. Here in this hall are displayed the, the statues that are meant to show visitors from across the country and all over the world, each of our respective states' best men and women. But today, we unveil not just the statue of one of the greatest Floridians. We unveil the statue of an American whose life exemplified our nation's long, historic, and ongoing 246-year journey to live up fully to the promise of our founding. And today we unveil the statue of an American who left for all of us an example, an example of love, an example of hope, an example of faith in God, an example of a desire to live in harmony with others, to live in harmony with our fellow citizens, an example which our nation should follow now more than ever. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Nancy Pelosi, Speaker of the United States House of Representatives. Thank you to all of our participants today and all who made this important special occasion possible for the Capitol, for our country. Thank you, Kathy Castor. Uh, thank you so much to Nancy Lohman. Thank you, Dr. Drake. Thank you all, and thank you, Senator, for your role as governor and for honoring us with your presence today, Senator Scott. Thank you. And thank you to the state of Florida. Just think of it. It's a privilege for all of us to pay tribute to Mary McLeod Bethune, an unyielding force for racial justice, a pioneer and voice for gender equity at that time, imagine, and a devoted advocate for education, as has been mentioned. I've had the honor of having a bust of Dr. Methune in my office for decades, and now I'm proud that Congress will be blessed with this magnificent presence in Statuary Hall. All of us are in awe of Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune's extraordinary story. As, we, as her, born to parents who were formerly enslaved, she devoted her life to opening doors of opportunity for more Americans. She did so by, in her own words, engraved on this statue, which I want you all to come up and see, invest, I invest in the human soul. It may be a diamond in the rough. Uh, 
that's optimistic about all of us. Establishing a boarding school, which lives on at Bethune Cookman University, registering women to vote after the ratification of the 19th Amendment, becoming what was at the time the highest ranking black official uh, under President Franklin Roosevelt, helping lead influential civil rights groups, including the NAACP, until she found them to be too moderate. And she formed her own organization, and that's the statue that I have in my office. And how poetic, I mean, how um, wonderful it is that she was able to do so much. Here she is, sitting next, standing next to Rosa Parks. Isn't this remarkable? Now, as has been said, this is the first African Amer black, stat black American statue coming from a state. We, at, as an act of Congress, voted to have a statue of Rosa Parks here. Many of us knew her, and she told us, right, Stanley? She wanted to be a statue sitting down, sitting down, <laughs> for all that that meant. <laughs> and Dr. Um, uh, Mr. Kyburn, he worked with Martin Luther King, and we have his statue here in the Capitol. We did not know Sojourner Truth and Frederick Douglass, personally, <laughs> but we're very proud that they are in the Capitol, and actually Frederick Douglass is a statue from the District of Columbia, not yet a state, but nonetheless, that still makes Mary, Dr. McLeod, the, uh, the first. Again, a real tribute to the state of Florida. What an honor for us all. Now, since, well, you have to know about Kathy Castor. Relentless, persistent, constant, optimistic, creative in every way. And as members knew what Kathy was up to, they all were sharing their stories, especially when we announced the unveiling of the statue. Barbara Lee told us, Congresswoman Barbara Lee told us that her mother worked with Dr. Mary McLeod Bassoon. Where is Joyce Beatty? I saw her a minute ago. Her grandmother or your mom? Okay, so her family, for a number of generations, both worked with her. And I'm sure many other members uh, will have their stories about their association. Again, since the announcement of this statue, the, the members have been identifying themselves. She had many friends, whether she realized it or not, uh, other many of people associating themselves with her. And how poetic that Dr. Bassoon replaces a little known Confederate general trading a traitor for a civil rights hero in the capital of the United States. Thank you, Florida. And let us also recognize again the sculptor, the gifted sculptor, Nilda Comets, who breaks another barrier, as was mentioned, as the first Hispanic artist with a piece in the National Statuary Hall collection in the Capitol. Thank you, Nilda. Again, welcoming this statue is such a privilege for all of us. I was visited Petrosanti, a place where this statue was carved, and as the leader mentioned, this is Carrara, the medal of Michelangelo and many great uh, Renaissance artists, and now Nilda. The people in Petrosanti, right this at this moment, are celebrating that they have a statue in the capital of the United States, and how appropriate the first by a um, Hispanic artist. Welcome in this statue is, I think, the muse of history, Cleo. She records everything that she sees going on in the Capitol. I think today she is smiling extra broadly because of what she is recording here today. <laughs> you see, Mary McCormick Bethune sitting, standing next to a seating, seated Rosa Parks. This is quite quite remarkable. They look quite comfortable together there. And as has been mentioned, Dr. Bethune takes her rightful place here as we honor a legendary American. In doing so, we ensure that young people, all young people, but especially young black women, girls, yes, Congressman Wilson and young boys as well, young people come to this capital 
and they see a reflection of our nation's beautiful diversity, beautiful success, and greater possibilities for them in their future. So as, as would be what Dr. McLeod had in her legacy, in her will, as our colleagues have mentioned, to give people faith and hope and confidence in what they, they could do. Thank you for everyone who made this possible. Thank you for everyone for being here today. It is a glorious day in the capital of the United States. Thank you all for making it so. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the benediction delivered by Chaplain Margaret G. Kibben. Would you pray with me? Holy God, the author and perfecter of our lives, the source of our faith, we pray your benediction over this momentous occasion as this monument to a true American hero stands tall before us, so may this lasting tribute to Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune rise impressively and inspirationally above all the crowds who will gather round here in this hallowed hall in the years to come. To all who shall look to the symbol of her exemplary life, reveal to them the unwavering strength and inimitable courage Dr. Bethune embodied. Inspire in all who look upon her the conviction and integrity, not just hewn in the statue, but engraved in her soul. And as we honor Dr. Bethune's brave and determined spirit, so in our lives the same desire to dedicate our hands, our heads, and our hearts to equality in the pursuit of both education and happiness. Holy God, we each reap the benefits of Dr. Bethune's noble efforts. As we stand in awe of her keen awareness of the needs around her, may we somehow prove worthy of the legacy of faith, hope, love, and a thirst for education that she now sets before us to uphold. In the name of our Redeemer, we pray. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain in your seats for the departure of the official party.